Hi YouTube, this is Felicia with Bible Scraps and I am here to share a recipe for hand sanitizer that's available on the on the WHO website. WHO stands for World Health Organization website. Now, this recipe is special because it's targeting areas, um, geographical areas and populations that lack clean water and hand soap. So this recipe is perfect for homeless people. And that's why I'm making this recipe and sharing it because I'm assisting a homeless individual in my area and I wanted to share some hand sanitizer with him and I came across this recipe and I thought how perfect, right? Because I know that he don't have access to clean water and soap. I wanted to make something. I needed to do something to help in my own little way, minimize, decrease, or prevent the spread of um, this virus amongst the homeless population. And the government is really concerned about that as well. So this recipe is perfect if you also aid the homeless. If you have these products, you might want to utilize this recipe. So I'm going to have the link below to whose organization now this recipe is not for the average person like you and i right because well some of the language it's not difficult to understand but it's geared more so to the large entities that make hand sanitizer so what i've done i found another site that i'm gonna link in my description box below I found another site where someone broke down the measurements because um, if you follow the WHO recipe, you'll end up with several gallons of hand sanitizer. But I found a site that broke down the measurements. Also, WHO recommends that you use 99.8% alcohol. A lot of us can't find that. I have 91%. And this other website that I found that you can use 91%. You just have to use more of it. So the person has broken down the different measurements that's needed to make. Well, I made two batches in this video. And you see these two bottles here, which I'm so very proud of. I feel good doing my little part to aid with this crisis that we have. So as you all know, hand sanitizer is very hard to find. A lot of people are making it themselves. I hear pharmacies are starting to make it. Distilleries are starting to make it as well as inmates are making it. And people like you and I, we're also making it. Now I have to say some experts say you shouldn't make your own hand sanitizer because you might not make a strength that's effective when it's said and done. Your finished product should be at least 60% alcohol. So some experts state individuals may not mix it right. They might not add the right ratio, which will render an ineffective or less effective final product. And then you have some experts who say, if you have the ingredients, make it. It may not be perfect, but having something to um, use in case you don't have soap and water is better than not having anything at all. Speaking of soap and water, once again, this recipe is for individuals who don't have soap and water. If you have soap and water, we probably all have heard by now, soap and water is the best bet to kill germs. Nothing does it better, not even the best hand sanitizing solution and I think this is the best one out there because it's like probably the strongest one out there once again because it's geared towards regions that don't have any clean water but once again hand sanitizer is good to have when you're out and about and you don't have immediate access to um soap and water because it kills Here's the recipe germs. for who and once again, I'll have this linked below and you guys could print it out or just read it online. Um, I'm using glycerin in the video. Glycerol is used by who? I understand they're the same 
products, except glycerol is the pure form of glycerin, but it states oh, that yes. you can use, it just doesn't state what those are, but different ones can be used, but you want to use ones that don't interfere with alcohol or mix as well with alcohol and don't add anything toxic to the hand sanitizer. Now, who do not recommend the usage of essential oils or perfumes because there might be allergic reactions. I know there's a lot of recipes out there and I will use recipes where I add um, essential oils, but who don't recommend it? And this video is all about trying to follow whose recipe to the T because once again, I want to create a hand sanitizer that is, that's, well, that's going to benefit homeless people who don't have access to soap and water like individuals who are not homeless. All right, let's get started with the ingredients needed to make this hand sanitizer. Okay, the WHO recipe calls for glycerin. Actually, the name that's used is glycerol 98% so this is what I had glycerin my understanding is it's pretty much the same thing but glycerol is the the pure form of glycerin so you're going to need this you're also going to need of course alcohol now I'm using 91% Whose recipe calls for the strongest? Well, I guess the strongest would be 100%. I'm not even sure if you can get 100% alcohol, but it calls for the 99.8% alcohol. But I found a recipe online that adapts the 91% to this recipe. We just have to use more of it. And you're also going to need peroxide. Now, in addition to those three items, you're going to need boiled cold water. It's important that you that you read instructions for yourself because once again, I'm following to the best of my ability who's their recipe, but their recipes were not written for a layperson like myself. So I, I'm using other articles. They've online. broken down the measurements, right? Because if I followed the Who's recipe directly, I would end up with, I believe, several gallons of hand sanitizer. And I don't need to have that okay. much right now. So what I've done, these are the containers that I'll be using. I have sterilized these containers with hot water, soap, and bleach. In addition to that, what I've also done was after it air dried out, I poured alcohol in each container and I let it air dry. That's what who recommends that you do. Okay, so for this recipe, once again, I'll have this linked below. Um, you need one cup of 99% alcohol or one cup plus four teaspoons of 91%. So that's what I'm going to be using. I think I'm going to make, I'm going to use this picture here. I'm going to make two, two batches of this particular recipe. I'm going to first start off with pouring two cups. Now, alcohol does evaporate. So once you pour it, you want to go ahead and use it. So that looks like it's about two cups. And I'm going to pour it inside my pitcher. Make sure your hands are clean. Two. So I need eight teaspoons. So let's see here. I'm going to use a tablespoon. Three teaspoons makes one tablespoon. So I'm going to use two tablespoons and then two teaspoons. Now, I'm pouring right over my alcohol. If I pour a little bit too more than what I'm supposed to, I'm okay with that. And you know what? I don't think I had that filled to the top. So now I'm going to use the teaspoon. Experts, they, I mean, some say you shouldn't make your own because 
You may not use the right measurement. You may not stir it, so it may not be effective. And then you have some experts who say, go ahead and make it. It's not a precise um, recipe, but if you're close enough, you know, that's good enough. Well, if you have these ingredients, if you have them, I would say, you know, and you need hand sanitizer, why not try and make it? Okay, so we, we've we added the alcohol. Now it states to add one tablespoon of peroxide. Now, the recipes that I have found online that uses olive vera and alcohol, none of those really call for peroxide. Okay, so... We need two tablespoons. I'm going to use the same spoon for the alcohol. I haven't used peroxide in so long. For some reason, I thought it should be brown. <laughs> okay, so we've added our peroxide. Now we need one teaspoon of glycerin. Now, Add two teaspoons of this glycerin. Here is one. There's two. I'll oh. let as much drip out as possible. Okay, so I realize now I should have just poured all my ingredients in this measuring cup, but I didn't. So what I'm going to do is pour my ingredients into the measuring cup and this gives me two about two and one fourth if I'm reading that correctly so what I'm gonna do now is add my boiled cold water I'm gonna add it until because I'm making two batches if you were making one batch you would add enough water until you got to one and one third cup but I'm making two batches, so I'm going to add enough water until I get to two and two-thirds. And I'm going to use this paddle to mix it thoroughly. Now you could wear gloves too. I think who recommends that gloves are worn? Now, this particular mixture, it's a lot more watery or liquefied than the hand sanitizer you find in the store. And that's because of the ratio of alcohol to, to glycerin. You have much more alcohol used in this recipe and less glycerin used. Now I'm going to pour my hand sanitizer into these bottles. And you can see just how liquid liquidy it is. And I have sterilized these containers as well. Okay, so I have two bottles of hand sanitizer ready to be dispensed to my homeless friend. Now, who recommends that you quarantine your hand sanitizer for three days before using it? Keep in mind, this recipe is once again targeted towards populations and regions who don't have access to clean water and hand soap. So I think this is perfect for the homeless population. I could also label my hand sanitizer but you know what let's go ahead and try this out you can see just how liquefied it is and the way you use sanitizer you get your hands completely coated in between your fingers both sides and you know what as i use this it don't feel as e abrasive as i thought it would feel keep in mind too if you do have open wounds or sores you're probably it's probably going to burn because majority of this solution is alcohol but it doesn't i could actually feel the glycerol yeah because it feels kind of silky smooth like hmm this might be a recipe i could use for myself and to compare it to a store-bought hand sanitizer you see how well let's just open it up 
you can see how thick it is. It's not liquefied at all because this particular hand sanitizer has more either aloe vera gel or the glycerin or glycerol in it, but it does have at least 62% alcohol. So it's effective at killing germs. The one we just made in the video has a higher content of alcohol. Once again, because um, it's targeted towards those areas that lack clean water and hands. We gotta soap. talk about the dangers of working with alcohol and hand sanitizer, right? Your alcohol and your homemade hand sanitizer, they're both highly flammable products. So you don't wanna have your Neither one of these come in contact with open flames or with heat. Now, I doubt if any pharmacies or, you know, people like that watch this video. But for our own edification, it states that this recipe should not be used to make quantities exceeding 50 liters locally or in central pharmacies lacking specialized air conditioning and ventilation, okay? So even if you're at home and you have all the ingredients, you don't want to make more than, well, I'm only making just a little bit, but you don't want to make too much because once again, hand sanitizers as well as alcohol is highly flammable you do want to keep this out of the reach of children you of course you can't drink it right you don't want to um put it in your eyes or um it somehow get into your mouth so once again well i would store this like it's medicine i would store it in a medicine cabinet away and out of the reach of children if you want your kids to use this, pour it into their hands yourself or supervise them using this. But once again, it's highly flammable. Therefore, it's a dangerous product. Yes, even your do-it-yourself precious hand you guys, sanitizer. That's going to do it for me. I feel honored. I feel blessed to have this to share with a homeless man. Homeless people, they're they're forgotten. They're forsaken during times like this, because, you know, we get caught up in taking care of our own. And sometimes certain populations, they just get left out. But once again, the government is concerned about the homeless population. And I just feel so good knowing that I'm doing something that's so small, but I'm helping a homeless man keep his hands clean, right? This is the perfect formula, the perfect recipe for individuals like himself and yeah now he can eat with clean hands he has something that can help prevent him from getting infected and i feel really really good about that so i'm going to grab a bottle and put it in my walking bag so when i do see him i have something more to give him in addition to giving him money for food and now i can give him something that he can use on his hands to disinfect his hands before he eats and i feel really good about that now perhaps you work with churches and larger organizations you guys feel free to share this video i do recommend once again that you read my read information for yourself right it's always good to read it for yourself i will once again have these two resources linked below but if you like this video like it feel free to share it and subscribe so you can be on the lookout for okay i've already filmed a video using a standard recipe to make hand sanitizer and in my opinion it was like just a disaster <laughs> <laughs> because it wasn't as easy as I thought it was going to be. Making this was pretty easy and straightforward. But yeah, you guys subscribe if you want to see that video because I'm not going to edit out the things that happened in that video. Look, it is what it is and it's going to be what it be. And it was what it was for me. So I'm not going to edit any of that out. If you're interested in seeing that video, subscribe. If by chance that... um that video 
is already public when I share this video you could click right now in the upper right hand screen to be taken to it all right you guys like subscribe share check out my links in the description box and I want to thank you all for watching as always blessings